All right, all right. What's happening? Brian Edwards, major wager. Let's talk some college football games of the year with uh, the coronavirus era, if you will. We don't have games going on right now. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video about the UFC uh, 249 that we might have uh, April 18th. Um, for all those impacted uh, with uh, family, loved ones, friends, condolences to those who have lost somebody, and even just thoughts with all those that are dealing with uh, family or friends that have been infected with the virus. Horrible, horrible, horrible stuff, but... It is what it is, so uh, we got to do it. We got to get through it. We got to uh, got to quarantine. Stay at the his people. All right. So with, with you know everything on hold, obviously uh, bookmakers have been throwing out a lot of football stuff. We're real, real, real early. Um, NFL season win totals. Way more NFL draft and NBA draft props than we've ever seen before. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So we're gonna talk some um, just uh, and go to major wager. I did an article on just well, I did one a week or so ago on just SEC focused on the SEC games of the year. Uh, this morning I wrote one just on the September games, non SEC week zero through week four. So that's what we're gonna cover right now. All right. So week zero this year. Uh, last year we had UF um, Miami Gators non cover but a win. And then we had the Arizona-Hawaii game late night, and Hawaii won outright as a 10.5-point underdog. So it's a revenge game for Arizona. They are hosting um, Hawaii, and they are 10.5 again, but this time at home. Obviously, Nick Rolovich, um, who just who won uh, 18 games at Hawaii the past two years, did a spectacular job when Mike Leach bolted for Starkville. Rolovich got the Washington State gig. Um, remember Cole McDonald um, turned pro early, but Chevin Cordero has been an outstanding backup. Um, the last two years has actually orchestrated comeback wins. I want to say three different games, and he's only a rising redshirt sophomore. He retained his redshirt as a true freshman, even though he was getting he played four games and he played meaningful, meaningful uh, games. Uh, Brian, oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, so Kevin Sumlin, man, boiling, boiling hot seat uh, for him as um, where the hell is he? Oh, he's at Miami. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get my stats here. Oh, nine and fifteen overall, six and twelve in Pac-12 play since uh, taking the job after um, getting a pink slip at A&M. He, he's on a boiling hot seat, obviously. Um, they ended last year with not just seven straight L's, seven straight L's by double-digit margins. So Cordero in 18, uh, when he only played the four games, 30 of 49 for 384 yards, 6 to 2 TDI and T ratio. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he loses JoJo Ward and Cedric, I'm sorry, JoJo um, Ward and Cedric Bird. And uh, but they do have um, uh, Jared Smart coming back. We had a huge year last season. Uh, it's actually Keith Smart's son, Keith Smart of '87 IU baseline jumper fame against Syracuse. Should have been my Gators in that game. He let a five point lead get away against the Cuse when Ronnie Cycli dominated the late jo Dwayne Chinchus. Um, Cordero last year, 69 of 120, 57 and a half percent. Completion percentage, 907 yards, 8 to 3 TDI and T. So 14 to 5 career TDI and T ratio. He also ran for three touchdowns last year and 212 yards, 5.3 yards uh, per carry. Todd Graham is the new head coach at Hawaii, who I've never really liked Todd Graham. I just didn't like his one and done at Pitt. He also had a one and done at, uh, I think it was Rice before he went to Tulsa, which actually is understandable, but um, the one and done at Pitt to ASU, it just, I just don't like it when coaches do that, but anyhow, he's only 55, he's been out of football together for two years, I think he was still getting paid handsomely by ASU, but um, 
you know, he he had some good years at ASU. The first couple, the last three, was kind of like six and seven, seven and six. And uh, anyhow, they went in a different direction. Made it, and I was one of the very few that loved the hire of Herm Edwards, and it has gone pretty well. Um, seemed like everybody hated that hire, especially the national writers. Um, but anyway, I think Todd Graham's a pretty good hire for Hawaii. You gotta understand, Hawaii's got like the worst facilities of any Mountain West program, et cetera. So, um, yeah, he's 95 and 61 overall, five and four in nine bowl games, 12 years as a head coach, five double digit win totals. So, um, again, I don't really like Todd Graham, but I think that's a pretty good hire for Hawaii. Um, all right. So, Oh, the other week zero game is Notre Dame uh, versus um, Navy. They're going to play in Dublin, Ireland at 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN August 29th. And Notre Dame is 16 and a half. Uh, Ian Book is back after a 34 to 6 TDINT ratio last year. 3,034 passing yards. Also ran for 546 yards and four touchdowns. Um, when they played in South Bend last year, Notre Dame won 52 to 20, which some might recognize that score. 1 2 97, New Orleans Superdome Gator ass beating on the Knolls. It was also 52 20 score, in case you're wondering. But after that, Ken Nui Matalolo's squad went 4 0, both straight up and against the spread. After going 3 10 in 2018, they go 11 and 2. Straight up and 10 and 3 against the spread last year, but they did get stroked by Notre Dame by 32. But that was a true road game, and we've got about half of that margin, uh, and then a hook uh, for the game in Dublin, which is obviously Ireland. And so, um, I think you'll have a nice home, home crowd advantage at least for the Fighting Irish. All right, week one. We've got Clemson minus 23 at Georgia Tech. By the way, Clemson is the guy, I think, got seven line games in these games of the year. Um, I think the smallest one is 17 at FSU, with one exception. And it's going to be their first single digit favorite game in the regular season since a like October game in 17 against Va Tech. Um, so, oh, and the. The Clemson at Notre Dame game is seven or seven and a half. Uh, FanDuel has one, and uh, DraftKings has the other uh, line, seven or seven and a half. Um, so these are FanDuel week one. Again, Clemson minus 23 at Georgia Tech. Utah minus six. Utah, give me two. Minus six versus BYU. Utah has won nine straight Holy Wars. Uh, that's what they call the rivalry with BYU, uh, including a 30-12 to 12 win in Provo last year. Uh, this one's in Salt Lake. Uh, Oklahoma State minus 16 and a half at uh, Oregon State. Wait, I think I wrote that wrong. Damn, I'm pretty sure that game is actually uh, in Stillwater. Let me look here. Uh, never mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in Stillwater. I think I wrote that wrong. I'm looking on my uh, what I wrote this this morning. Anywho, um, so th th oh, those three games are Thursday. On Friday of week one, Wisconsin, Camp Randall, 14-point home favorite to Indiana. They're replacing Jonathan Taylor. Um, UCF is a three-point home chalk to North Carolina and Sam Howell. Uh, then on Saturday, you got FSU minus three against West Virginia and Atlanta and Michigan minus one at Washington. Um so the Utes, they lose uh, Zach Moss, three straight, 1,000 uh, rushing yards or more, or, and many more uh, in, in a few instances. Um, they lose Tyler Huntley, QB, but they've got Jake Bentley, the three-year starter at South Carolina, um, who had the season-ending injury in week one versus the Tar Heels last year. Um, the Utes started last year 11-1 and one straight up, 9-3 and three against the spread, but then they got smashed their last two games. I had them against Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, really let me down there. 37-15 loss, and then they lost to Ellinger and the Longhorns, 38-10 in the Alamo Bowl. Uh, the Mike Norvell era at FSU starts against the Mountaineers. Year two for Neil Brown, who I'm a big Neil Brown fan. 
uh, dating back to his Troy days. They went five and seven straight up and five, five and one against the spread last year. But he had a lot of like, he booted like, I want to say four defensive starters or they transferred. You know, he was just kind of cleaning house there. But what I wanted to point out is um, as a 14 point road underdog, two different times the last three weeks of the season, they won outright. Um, as a 14-point road dog at K-State, at TCU, and they also played Baylor a three-point game. And obviously Baylor was, you know, having a huge year under Matt Rule, got to the Sugar Bowl uh, to play Georgia. Um, FSU, the, the, the unmitigated disaster that was Willie Taggart, which has been well covered um, in these videos uh, in the last year or so. No need to go into that again. Uh, Norvell did sensational at Memphis. He actually got his notoriety and got his name popping, if you will, when he was uh, OC at ASU under Todd Graham. Uh, but he went 38-15. and 15. He took what Fuente started, and when Fuente went to uh, Blacksburg, Norvell um, kept it rolling and actually picked up the pace. 38-15, and 24-8 in the AAC. And some of those L's he had were just unfathomable heartbreakers. I remember two to UCF. What was that, two seasons ago, I think? Um, so anyhow, oh, and they were 12-1 and one going to the Cotton Bowl when he took the FSU job. Um, they lost in the Cotton Bowl. It was a hell of a game, and, uh, but he wasn't there for that. So he went 12-1 and one last year. With all these spring practices getting canceled, certainly FSU is one team. I mean, a lot of teams, a lot of specific players are going to be hurt. Um, uh, uh, Georgia comes to mind. Uh, Miami with Derek King. Uh, Georgia, obviously, with the Wake Forest uh, transfer, Jamie Newman. Um, any teams with new coaches, Graham, Hawaii, Norvell, FSU, with new schemes, new coordinators, new pretty much everything. Of course, Odell Higgins still at FSU, though. Um, all right, 12 minutes in. All right, let's go week two. We're going to keep it quick with week two, and then we're going to, we're just going to break down these videos a little shorter. You know what? I think I'm just going to wrap it up right there, and then I'll do another one for week two through week four. Did we just cover only week zero and week one? We did, but I yapped for 12 and a half minutes. Brian Edwards, majorwager.com. All right, that's our first one. We're coming back with a bunch more. And we'll have them up today and tomorrow. And I'm coming to you on, oh, hell, I don't even know what day it is today. Friday, I think. It's really hard to tell the days of the week during the corona era. Um, yeah, coming to you at about 11.40 a.m. Eastern on Friday, April 3rd. Just covering a few college football games of the year, but going to be back. Other videos with many more. Brian Edwards, Major Wager, over now.